Good morning. Good morning. I'm Brenda Boss. I'm the Bishop of the Southwest California Synod, and I feel like I'm coming home, coming back to St. Luke's. Many of you know that I've been here many, many times, many of them when I was an intern, when I was a seminarian. I think this is the first uh, congregation I got to announce that I'd been entranced, which is another step along, or, or endorsed, another step along the way. And so it is just so good to be back here this morning. Uh, my wife Janice is with me this morning because as soon as we le we're done here, we need to go down to Orange County for a memorial. So I'm sad that I won't be able to stay for a real long time for coffee, but it's just so good to be all with, with all of you. I know it's always dangerous to talk to the musicians because they're musicians, they may not want to talk. But John, do you think you're the only vibes player in all of the ELCA? I wonder, every time I'm here, I'm like, guy, I don't hear vibes anywhere, and I love them. Oh, oh, I agree. I mean, encourage all the little kids to start playing. I mean, right? Okay, I am going to ask you a question. So when you're playing, and I know that you've got the mallets, they call them mallets, right? You've got the mallets in your hand in an in a interval. Does that interval change then while you're playing? Because I'm like, you don't just hold them, right? You move them. Yeah. When I was younger, my parents liked Chinese food. <laughs> <laughs> so not only is he amazing at mallets, that. That's fabulous. Thank you. Recently, I visited Trinity Faith, which is one of our Chinese language churches in Monterey Park, and afterwards they had a very traditional Chinese meal. And so there were things there that I had never seen before, I'll be honest. But um, bishop, to be a bishop means to eat whatever is set in front of you, which is in the Bible, but um, is to also eat whatever is set in front of you. And so I was eating this actually very, very wonderful seaweed salad, and I'd had chicken that was sort of cut in a different way than what Western people cut it, and I'd eaten all of that. And then they had this thing that looked like, well, it was kind of slimy gray, right? And so I wasn't so sure. And, and I had decided not to eat that. But I was sitting next to an eight-year-old, and, um, and, I, and I said, oh, I love this, I love that. And, I looked, and he looked at me, and he said, you like Chinese food? Like, he was mystified that I would even like it. And I thought, isn't that interesting that we all have these assumptions, right? So I found out that the gray slimy thing, which I didn't eat, but I wish I had, was actually a large noodle. You know how, like, in some Asian foods, they have very wide noodles? This was even wider. It was sort of like a ravioli or something. But I think inside it had a meat that I don't tend to eat. But I kind of regret it, because I would have been able to say, I ate this gray slimy thing, and it was delicious. But... So that was my morning, and I'm sorry that I can't be here to eat little crunchy cookie things that I'm sure I would enjoy a great deal. Anyways, it's wonderful to be with you. Thank you for coming together in God's house this morning, and thank you for being the ELCA here in Woodland Hills. Thank you for your witness. It's so wonderful to see so many of you who I recognize, and I recognize you not only for being here, but for being in church meetings, for being engaged in things that we're talking about. Um, your band has helped uh, during COVID in the 2020 year when the Synod office produced uh, worship services frequently. Um, we definitely had several pieces that came from Betty and, and, and all of you, so thank you for that. And um, I'm excited to hear your choir today. Um, I actually have um, wrangled an invitation, so I'm going to sing with them. So that'll be fantastic. Anyways, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Thank you. Let us sing, uh, God is here.
Let us pray. O oh God, mighty and immortal, you know that as fragile creatures surrounded by great dangers, we cannot by ourselves stand upright. Give us strength of mind and body, so that even when we suffer because of human sin, we may rise victorious through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Our first lesson is Isaiah 58. So if you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong and you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water, whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundation of many generations. You shall be called the repair of the breach, the restorer of streets to live in. If you refrain from trampling the Sabbath, from pursuing your own interests on my holy day, if you call the Sabbath a delight and the holy day of the Lord honorable, if you honor it, not going your own ways, serving your own interests, or pursuing your own affairs, then you shall take delight in the Lord, and I will make you ride upon the heights of the earth. I will feed you with the heritage of our ancestor Jacob, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. We shall read Psalms 103 responsibly. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is in within me. Bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all God's enemies. Who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases? Who redeems your life from the grave and crowns you with steadfast love? Who satisfies your desires with good things, so that your youth is renewed like an eagle's? O Lord, you provide education and justice for all who are blessed. You made known your ways to Moses and your works to the children of Israel. Our second lesson is Hebrews 12. You have not come to something that can be touched, a blazing fire and darkness and gloom and a tempest, and the sound of a trumpet and a voice whose words made the hearers beg and not another word be spoken to them, for they could not endure the order that was given. If ever an animal touches the mountain, it shall be stoned to death, indeed so terrifying was the signs that Moses said, I tremble with fear, but you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to innumerable angels in festive gathering, and to the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven, and to God the judge of all, and to the spirits of the righteous made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. See that you do not refuse the one who is speaking, for if they did not escape when they refused the one who warned them on earth, how much less will we escape if we reject the one who warns from heaven? At that time, his voice shook the earth, but now he has promised. Yet, once more, I will shake not only the earth, but also the heaven. This phrase, yet once more, indicates the removal of what is shaken, that is, created things. 
so that what cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us give thanks by which we offer to God an acceptable worship with reverence and awe. For indeed, our God is a, our God is a consuming fire. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the gospel acclamation. chapter. Glory to you, Lord. Now Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath, and just then there appeared a woman with a spirit that had crippled her for 18 years. And she was bent over and quite unable to stand up straight. And when Jesus saw her, he called her over and he said, Woman, you are set free from your ailment. And when he had laid his hands on her immediately, she stood up straight and began praising God. But the leader of the synagogue, indignant because Jesus had cured on the Sabbath, kept saying to the crowd, mm -mm, there are six days on which work ought to be done. Come on those days to be cured and not on the Sabbath day. But the Lord answered him and said, you hypocrites, does not each of you on the Sabbath day untie his ox or his donkey from the manger and lead it away to give it water? And ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound for 18 long years, be set free from this bondage on this Sabbath day? And when Jesus had said this, all of his opponents were put to shame, and the entire crowd was rejoicing at all the wonderful things that he was doing. This is the gospel of the Lord. Glory to you, Lord. Please be seated. So that first hymn, God is Here, has a line that always strikes me when it says, Honesty of Preaching. And every week I think, oh, whenever that song is sung, which is frequently in a Lutheran church, I remember that I need to be honest in preaching. I had a plan this morning on what I was going to talk to you about, and after the prayer of the day, I sat down and Janice reminded me that this prayer of the day is problematic. Not your fault. It was the one that was produced by the ELCA to be prayed in an ELCA church. But disability rights people have said, hey, that wasn't cool. And she said, I thought you were going to change it. And I was like, I, 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 what, I didn't. <laughs> Which is a lot at my house. I thought you were going to do that. I, 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 I didn't. <laughs> but let me talk about what we're thinking. And let's actually drill down for a second on this gospel. Jesus, it literally says, a spirit has crippled this woman. So we imagine that she is a woman who is quite bent down for 18 years. And if you really think about it, you think, well, she had scoliosis, she had some sort of uh, birth defect, there was something that made her spine curve. But if you really drill down on it, it says her spirit had curved her down. So, I have frequently preached about this as depression, shame, isolation, widowhood, poverty, different things that make us drop our head. And as life continues, we drop our head more, and suddenly we become smaller and smaller. And the beauty of this sermon is that Jesus sees her and notices her, and in the noticing, lifts her up. And yes, his touch heals her, but that it was relationship that healed her. The prayer of the day, first of all, says we can't stand upright without God. So what does that say to all of us who cannot stand upright? What does that say to any of us who use a cane or a walker or a wheelchair or have scoliosis or whatever that thing is that we all get? Recently I was at a physical therapist and he said, okay, stand up. And he went, okay, there's a little thing starting here. And I thought, yeah, we, most of us get that in aging or texting. I'm not going to blame the texting. but. <laughs> But you know, and so, so what does it say if a prayer says, God, without you, we can't stand upright? Well, I, I can't stand upright, so do I not have God? It's a problem. Our language matters. And later it says, because of our sinfulness, sometimes we are damaged. Again, is that what we're saying? 
that our child who is born with a defect, that our mother who is mentally ill, that I who have a stomach that never stops boiling, God isn't in my body? No, 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 we didn't mean that. Yeah, but we say it. Now, we don't as much as we used to, right? We used to say, there's that beautiful, important story in the Bible with the blind man and God, and they say to Jesus, hey, did he sin or did his parents? Because why is he blind? There must be a sinful reason for it. Can you imagine trying to teach that in Sunday school at the Braille Institute? <laughs> but we'd go, oh, that's not exactly what we mean. But do we? We, we still, as a society, wonder what happened. God, what happened there? Was that an accident? Were they born that way? Did mom do something? Did dad do something? I admit, recently I was with a person who has some sort of speech defect, some sort of damage in their hand, and they were talking about abuse in their family, and I thought, wow, was she born this way, or did something happen when she was a child? And I'm trying to make sense of it, because that's what our human brain does. There must be a reason why a bad thing has happened. No. One of my favorite things that I ever learned from a nurse, it was a friend of ours, and we said something about, I don't know, child birth defect. You know, I was working for a while in Children's Hospital Los Angeles, and I was in the cardiac ward. You know, newborn babies with a heart defect. Why did that happen? And the nurse shrugged and said, bad luck. And we're all just one moment of bad luck from being disabled. I have a young man on my staff who's not 40, and will use a cane for the rest of his life because of an injury that happened when he was 32. Bad luck. But boy, is he teaching me a lot about disability rights. So then we come into this part, and today this struck me a lot. When Jesus, when Jesus heals this woman, and what's the guy say? Hey, there are six days to get healed. Don't do it at church. Wow. Is that not a statement for all of us? Be disabled, be annoying, be mentally ill somewhere else. Let's make sure the church is filled with able-bodied, right-minded, healthy people. No, no, that's not what we mean, or is it? I am so grateful that one of the big learnings I have in my office right now is my staff who keeps reminding me the biggest group, the biggest group of people who are marginalized are disabled. We didn't have the right, um, the, 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 we tried to have some statistics lately, but in our synod, which is just like every other synod in the world, most of us are a little bit aged now, and disability comes with that. I think that the, the, the I, I, I'm not going to get the, the, the numbers right, but say like Los Angeles County is, and I'm not going to get it exactly right, but if, the, if Los Angeles County is 42% Latino and 12% African American and 8% Asian, 37, whatever the percentages of Latino, higher than that are people who have some sort of disability. And I'm not talking we're all in wheelchairs and crutches. I'm talking about mental disability. I'm talking about speech disability. I'm talking about all kinds of disabilities. Some of our congregations have been wondering about what do we do about people who can't take in this much sensory uh, stimulation. Some congregations are trying to do how do we love that autistic child in our pews that we can't be this loud. Not everybody has that. Each congregation comes up with their own call towards this. But I want to invite you, St. Luke's, because you've been so responsive to your community, to consider what can we do to be more welcoming to those with mobility issues. You have the luck of, I think you can get into your sanctuary without struggle. You've decided, you've been committed to keep an online presence, which is so important. Over and over during the pandemic, people said to me, never stop the camera, because there will always be homebound who could not have a church life anymore, and now they can. And we keep saying to ourselves, well, if we have to make changes for the disabled, we're going to have to change the structure of our church. We're going to have to pull out that pew, and we're going to have to add a ramp. Really? Because you added a screen for all of us. That changed your community enormously. You're now living with a blocked view with a camera, and it's fine. I encourage you to think about what other changes you might make. 
This is welcome. Somebody said to me, it's important to say on your website you have gluten-free wafers. Really? Yes. I'm thinking about people that you wouldn't even consider. I had a family member, and this sounds like a fart joke, and it's not, but I had a family member who said that they couldn't go out anymore because they had so much flatulence. I mean, that's real. That people say, I can't go to church because I have to go to the bathroom twice during the service, and I don't want to do that anymore. This is honesty of preaching. This is a, <laughs> right? But this is, these are the people that giving a camera, giving a live stream experience to can still feel like one of us. Maybe I will make a fart joke. If anybody at home is now farted, God bless you. But <laughs> I, you can tell I preach a little different as the bishop. I just don't worry that somebody's going to call me in and say, what just happened? Maybe I should. Maybe I should. But friends, we are constantly wondering how we're going to be a church that attracts young people because that was the model we had in the past. This church, every other church that's a suburban church, simply had to build the place, open the doors, and families in the neighborhood came in. That doesn't happen anymore. And then we in the pews had babies and kept us going. We're past that too. We tend as a church, not St. Luke's, I mean church capital C, we tend to apologize for the fact that now we mostly have senior ministry. Not entirely, I do see the young people in the room, I'm not trying to ignore you. But we think that we're wrong, that we haven't shifted to care for those who have a walker, who have hearing disability, who have seeing problems. The screen helps so much. My favorite, one of my favorite stories of my old congregation is that we started to, we asked people, would you like a large print bulletin? Oh no, oh no, I don't need that. We have about five large print bulletins. Would you like one? Oh no. Then we changed all bulletins to large print. And every single person, oh thank God, I can finally read it. No one ever admitted they needed a large print bulletin. But just making some shifts to, save, to help everybody is a loving act. So here is this story of someone who is healed in church, someone who is seen in church, someone who is part of church. Let's just wonder what that would look like in new ways. Having to think about, do you need assistance? Not assuming. Right? I had somebody who taught me deeply about caring for them when they were in a, used a wheelchair. Don't just come behind them and push them. Can I help you? Do you need help? I don't. Thank you. Actually, yeah, if you'd push open that door, that would help a lot. Fantastic. We're, we're Christians. We should be great at this. You can be great at this. So, thank you for listening to me encouraging a really important ministry, a really important outreach, a really important next step of love and caring in Jesus' name. Amen.
trusting in God's extraordinary love, let us come near to the Holy One in prayer. You crown your church with steadfast love and mercy. Guide us continually in our baptismal covenant to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. Use our diverse gifts in service to the whole people of God. Holy One, you satisfy the needs of all creatures. Protect the habitats of fish and birds, local bodies of water or wildlife refugees may be named. Repair ecosystems damaged by misuse, neglect, or natural disaster that all creation may thrive. Holy One, you make your way known to all people. Inspire the rulers and leaders of nations with your compassion and mercy. Raise up activists and community organizers to restore places affected by violence, poverty, and inequality. Holy One, you provide justice for all who are oppressed and relief to all who are afflicted. Heal those who are bent over by addiction, depression, and anxiety. Set free all who cry out under the weight of mental, emotional, or physical distress. Additionally, we pray by name for Bill Tritton in the death of Pastor Janet's mother, Sharon Tritton, on Tuesday, August 16th. For recovery and healing for Marianne Hauser's parents, Richard Scheffler from pacemaker implant surgery, and Mary Jean for healing from severe back pain. For Betty Ross's daughter, Noelle Simone, who has surgery on Tuesday, July 5th, and has been hospitalized twice since then with complications. What prayers please for her swift and complete recovery. Thanks to God for Keaton Nicholas' healing and continued strength to return to full health. Sue Ivanjack for continued recovery and giving thanks for her healing. And Larry for his speedy recovery and complete healing from a metatarsal bone fracture on foot. Teresa Fernald, who is in hospice. Bob Ivanjack for successful shoulder replacement surgery. Linda Sands for a successful pacemaker surgery in August. Jane Christensen, who is struggling after a massive heart attack in April, and for her husband Mark, who is her only available caregiver, friends of Randy. Stuart Schoenmer, friend and colleague of Randy, for hearing from a massive heart attack. Nancy Schneider, Thanksgiving for her strong recovery from hip and leg surgery. Yong Hong Kim, Pastor Lee's father-in-law, Thanksgiving for improved health as he battles heart and kidney disease. Jerry Montshagen for healing and rehabilitation. Jacob Palau for strength to tolerate his current chemo treatment and a complete healing. Rosemary Capodici, giving thanks for her healing from a successful second hip replacement surgery. Rochelle Vanell fighting long-term health issues. Karen Gomez-Perez, safety for her family. For strength and a full healing for the following people undergoing chemo treatments. Joe Medina, fighting pancreatic cancer. Iris, Kenny, and Janine LaPelle, fighting cancer. David Sanchez, hospital for liver disease. Kristen Lundin, hospital in recovery in Arizona. Holy One. You call us to delight in the Sabbath. Renew our bodies, minds, and spirits in this worshiping assembly. Give rest to all who lead our congregation in worship, study, and service. For what other prayers may be offered today? Katie fighting a virus in her 
your eighth month of pregnancy. Generations bless your holy name. We give you thanks for the communion of saints who have gathered in prayer and praise in this place. Support us in your love until we rest forever in you. Holy One, receive the prayers of your children, merciful God, and hold us forever in your steadfast love through Jesus Christ, our holy wisdom. Amen. I don't know if you've even noticed, but one of the things that you're doing in your prayers is already such a good welcoming for those with hearing loss. Because we've said forever, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And to say instead, focus our hearts on you, lets people know that if God couldn't hear, God could still receive. Those types of things really do matter. And as you're leading, reading this list of, of so many people that are recovering from so many things, it's good, isn't it, as a church to wonder, how can we care for them? How can we write them a note? How can we help them when they have to carry something heavy? There's so many little gifts, little tiny acts of kindness. Jesus said, just offer a cup of cold water in my name. May the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. And also with you. I want to invite you to share a sign of God's peace in whichever way this community is comfortable doing so. God's peace. Peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. With you for those online. <laughs> all right, this is another part of being all over the community and not knowing how offering goes. So do I say now we collect the offering, or do I remind people that there's an offering plate in the back, and there's also online offering options for you today? That's it? Good. You can imagine, right? There's about 900 ways to collect offering. We didn't know. Let us pray. God of abundance. You have set before us a plentiful harvest. As we feast on your goodness, strengthen us to labor in your field and equip us to bear fruit for the good of all in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The risen Christ dwells with us here. All who are hungry, all who are thirsty, come. This gift of God's presence is for every soul. Receive the nurture and power and forgiveness of the living Christ. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. Fulfilling the promise of the resurrection, you pour out the fire of your spirit, uniting in one body people of every nation and tongue. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. One, two.
for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Amen. I want to make sure all of you have the communion kits. They were available at the back. Did everybody get one? If you didn't, I'm going to invite you to say, I need one. I'm also going to say, does anybody need help getting this piece open? You need one yet? Can you take one of these that has juice?
Let us join together the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Thank you, Bishop, for this wonderful sermon. And thank you to the musicians. And for Chris, who's given to us this summer. And we wish you well on your way to college in this fall. And Lisa, it's so nice to have you back. <laughs> Our clean streets um, will be September 10th. Right, Randy? Okay, and so we kind of wanted to tie that in with God's work on our hands. So council will be getting together and more to follow on that since uh, God's work our hands is on September 11th, Sunday. So we're going to try to tie those together. So remember to mark your date, September 10th and September 11th. So you'll be here where your God's work on hand shirts if you have them. Okay, and for our Janice, since you're going to be out of town, are you moving the date up on the PC kids? Okay, back to follow. So, as Jenna said, there's not a date set yet for the PC kids that we do uh, once a month. Um, 
So uh, West Valley Food Pantry, the same thing in the weekly word, what we need. Randy always thanks everyone for everything that has been given and that we take time. Okay, come on. So the first thing I want to say is some good news. We got through an appeal process last week and we've got the full approval now for our building. Uh, thank you. The other thing I wanted to know that we uh, were given a truck uh, to, or a van that we've been doing uh, uh, deliveries to senior citizens and I've been asking for uh, low sodium soup and uh, pop tops and stuff like that. Well, uh, it was Starbucks that was supplying that to us, and we're going to be able to keep the truck, but they're no longer going to supply us with the food and things of that nature. We do plan on keeping up with the mission, but we desperately, desperately need low-sodium canned soup, and I think, I can't remember what the other, uh, low-sodium, no, I can't read that. Uh. <laughs> uh. Protein bars, low sugar. And low sugar protein bars. And these are for the senior citizens, and we desperately need that to keep the uh, thing going. So if you're thinking about it, uh, low sodium can soup, please put that on your schedule. I found it pretty hard to find in the stores sometimes. They're bought out and whatnot. You can always get it on Amazon Smile. And if we do buy it on Amazon Smile, we can designate uh, St. Luke for a, uh, a donation. So thank you. Thank you, Randy. And thank you to our new volunteers, John and Dave. <laughs> giving Mary a much needed break so she can enjoy things like singing. <laughs> thank you for participating in that today. Um, and also, speaking of volunteering, as I mentioned last week, which I think I might have said wrong, it's the financial treasury that's stepping down, David. So we're looking for a person to take his place. We'd like to know if anybody is interested. Please let us know so that you can start getting trained. So any other volunteer positions, we have them all the time out in the community. So please think about volunteering. Thank you. Oh, yes, oh, okay, come on. Oh, you want to get the mail from Janet? So um, I just wanted to add um, one of the ministries that we're working on for this fall is to make ear warmer cozies for the homeless. And we're going to tie that into our Loaves and Fishes ministry. And this is what they look like. They're very, very easy to knit, real basic. And so if anybody is interested, um, they're going to go to the uh, veterans um, is it hospital that there? Mm -hmm. They'll take some. Uh, we're also going to do it with the, um, what's the place, the mission? Uh, uh, the, the other place that said they would take them? Oh, uh, Hope of the Valley. Hope of the Valley, which uh, was the old uh, food uh, for the homeless. So uh, we're just looking to get as many as we can, um, and we're hoping to do, take them to everybody in the beginning of December. So. Um, I'm anticipating we'll have 100 to 200 probably. Um, I have 12, I just needed watching TV the last couple of weeks. So it's, it's very, very easy. And if anybody has any questions, we'll have a how to knit uh, probably later in September and show anybody that's interested. Thank you. Chrissy? Yeah. Are we gonna have a training pretty soon on making those? I've got, uh, my trainer is a young lady and she thinks her and some of her, or my physical trainers, uh -huh. and I think she and some of her friends might want to do it. Absolutely. Uh, when I get back from uh, your probably the last half of September, we'll definitely plan one on a Saturday or Sunday, whatever, or both, whatever works for people. That'd be great. Thank you, Christy. And Mary's going to give us an update on Pastor. Yeah, just a quick update on Pastor Janet. She's doing really well. Um, still just really tired, still healing. Um, and, uh, and with her mother dying this past week, that was another difficult time for her um, but she's she's doing well she's healing well and looking forward to being back with people and thanks everyone for their prayers so please just continue your prayers thanks thank you Mary. any other announcements 
Thank you. I also want to thank you for your good care of your pastor. That is a witness in the world, friends. It really, really is. And I'm so glad to hear that she's recovering. Well, now we get sent. And a lot of us just kind of go, okay, well, go in peace, serve the Lord. But friends, this is an important part of our call. We come in here, we hear the word, we're strengthened by the word, we're strengthened by the meal, and then we go back out and be the hands and feet of Christ in the world. And so I've got my crozier with me, you know, which most of us think is just a sign of I'm a shepherd to the sheep, but it really means that I'm a traveler. And so I will walk out with this today, and I invite you to also walk out with your faith, with your hope, with your testimony. Go in peace. Love your neighbor. Thanks be to God. He will.